Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. Let's get right to it. Storms hitting the San Antonio area tonight. Yeah, finally what we've been waiting for and we see the radar right now. Sarah, tell us what's going on. Yeah, honestly, guys, it's been a long time since we've seen these summertime thunderstorms, right? So it may catch you a little off guard to hear that thunder, see that lightning, experience those gusty winds. But I'd like to reassure you that there's no damaging weather going on right now around San Antonio. Sure, it's noisy, but the bark is worse than the bite. We've We've got some good heavy rain falling from Bulverde down to Hollywood Park right now, just now starting to enter into Loop 410. So some heavier rain for the Leon Valley area and quite a few lightning strikes too. Just in Bear County alone, we've got about 87 lightning strikes right now. So far, no major power outages reported from CPS. But if you do lose power in the next couple of hours as this storm is moving through, remember we're right on your phone on KSAT.com. You can watch us live right there there right now if you do happen to lose power. These showers and storms are moving south at about 35 miles per hour, so they'll be working their way through Bear County here in the coming hour through about midnight. Coming up in the forecast, we've got another opportunity for rain tomorrow, but the big story tomorrow is going to be the heat. I'll have those details for you and a look at a cool front moving through this week. Courtney. What is the likelihood that you get two structure fires on the same street just blocks apart? Tonight, the San Antonio Fire Department recovering after fighting two fires on the same street on the west side just minutes apart. Yeah, those two house fires were blocks apart on San Eduardo Avenue. The night team's Avery Everett was there as crews put out both fires. It's getting more and more smoked and you can't even see the house anymore. And then uh, the flames start shooting out. You see the Martha flames? Garcia says in just minutes, she could no longer see across the 900 block of San Eduardo Avenue. Everybody got out safe, thank God. It was, it happened so fast. Her friend's home was covered in smoke, catching fire from what crews say was likely electrical. No one was hurt, but fire crews say the home's damage is widespread. Significantly now throughout the house because of the time lapse of what we were waiting on. Fire crews here at this house say they had some difficulties responding to the fire because they were already tied up just a few blocks down the same street, handling a fire there just minutes before. It's very freak nature that we make two structure fires on the same street just blocks apart. At this house fire in the 400 block, everyone got out safe too. The cause is still being investigated and it took 40 minutes for the crews to get the fire under control. But SAFD says that took time away from the house just blocks away. The one that would respond here were still at the other San Eduardo address. Crews put out both fires by sunset, but neighbors say it's a site on San Eduardo they won't be able to forget. There's just too many houses catching on fire right now with the, with the hot weather. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. From that fire to another one, San Antonio firefighters had their hands full with this one this afternoon. Crews sent over to a fire on Colwex Street that will be monitored by firefighters overnight. There's an important reason for that. That's because the fire broke out inside a commercial building that had lithium batteries stored inside. It took firefighters 40 minutes to put that fire out, and a hazmat team was called because of those burning lithium batteries. The fire damage to this home on East Highland Boulevard was contained to just the garage after an electrical bike battery sparked a fire this afternoon. Fire investigators on the scene say the homeowner closed the door connecting the house to the garage and once she noticed the fire and they say that's what prevented the flames from moving into the rest of the home. No injuries reported and besides CPS having to check for electrical damage throughout the house, people who live there did not have to leave for the night. For the first time, people living on the west side sat down with VIA and developer Dream On discussing the future of the SCOBY building near downtown. There are mixed opinions on how to turn an eyesore into a mixed space of apartment units and commercial space. The night team's Camelia Juarez brings us several sides of the issue. You've been there since 1925, so that's generations on generations that have put effort into the area. JR lives adjacent to the abandoned SCOBY storage unit located near downtown. He's one of many people invited to give input on the future of the SCOBY building. He says there are crime and drug-related issues in the area. With Haven for Hope, it's actually brought even more. So he hopes development of apartments and mixed-use retail space will bring more business to the area. We need more support for the area. We often don't get heard. 
we're often overlooked and we just need a lot of support, if, especially since the city put that there. On the opposite side, organizers like Robert Hernandez believe the potential apartment units should be public housing and affordable to people earning less than 30000 a year. Poor people exist and it's okay that they exist and they are hard workers. But even if they work hard, work two jobs, they can't afford rent. Via purchased the property back in 2017 with intentions of turning the area into a transportation hub. We're developing it because it's part of a transit community. It's part of the combination of the headquarters building and the transit center which serves, by the way, a million passenger trips a year. In previous board meetings, VIA discussed making some apartment units affordable to people making less than 60000 a portion of units at market rate, and open the building to commercial space. VIA president and CEO Jeff Arndt says nothing is set in stone just yet. We are not ironclad into any design, which is why we can meet today, take in, into consideration other folks' vote, uh, views, and then work with Dream On because Dream On is the developer, not VIA. And if Dream On can't make it work or can make it work, that's going to be their decision. Today's meeting was an invite only workshop, and VIA says there will be other opportunities to give feedback. Camelia Juarez, Case at 12 News. San Antonio Crime Stoppers need your help tonight finding a man they say stole from a pawn shop. Take a good look at your screen right now. Police say this man stole thousands of dollars worth of jewelry from the Cash America Pawn Shop on South Cross Boulevard back on August 1st. If you know anything about this crime, call Crime Stoppers immediately. That number 210-224-7867. It's posted on your screen there. You could receive up to $5,000 if your information leads to this suspect's arrest. One man in the hospital tonight, another in police custody after an overnight shooting. It all unfolded last night just before 10 o'clock in the 3400 block of East South Cross Boulevard. Officers say they found a 28 year old man with a gunshot wound outside an apartment complex. And as EMS arrived, a 30 year old man at Rocky's restaurant was found with a stolen gun. The man with the gun was taken into custody. Meanwhile, that victim taken to a nearby hospital for surgery. A 40 year old man behind bars after San Antonio police suspect he was drunk when he rear ended an officer this morning. The crash happened just after midnight on I-10 West Access Road near De Zavala. Police say the officer was stopped at a red light there when the man rear ended him. The uh, driver told the officer he had a few drinks before the crash. Amphetamine pills also found inside the car. It's unknown if the officer needed any medical attention after that crash. Happening around Texas tonight, a baby that was accidentally locked inside a car rescued thanks to the quick reaction of a flower mound firefighter and police officers. It was all caught on camera. I can take a look at your screen. The Dallas ABC affiliate WFAA reports the car fortunately was still running, but first responders couldn't force those doors open. Officers quickly pivoted and decided to break open a window to recover the baby, who was taken into an ambulance immediately to cool off. Looking ahead to things happening this week, on Monday, Police Chief William McManus and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez will be at a District 4 Public Safety Town Hall meeting. That town hall scheduled to start at 6, uh, 6 o'clock in the evening at St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church. It's over on Marbach Road. We plan to live stream it on all of our KSAT platforms. Still to come on the night beat, a northeast side convenience store with a history of low scores makes its third appearance on our Behind the Kitchen Door segment. The numerous violations inspectors found this time. Plus, extended exposure to a popular social media app could limit your child's ability to focus and communicate. The long-term risks and what a San Antonio psychiatrist is saying to parents and what they can do about TikTok brain. And after the break, we take you to Morocco, where thousands are dead after a devastating earthquake. We survey the damage next on the Night Beat.